Hey guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to use a weighted decision matrix. And so right here, we have a weighted decision matrix that is a pre-template that I've built for you. And so you can see on the left-hand side, we have all of our options that we're going to fill in. We have up to five. And on the top, we have criteria that are built in. Now, there are instructions on this pre-filled out template. So number one, list each option in the first column. Two, list the criteria descriptions in the second row. You're going to add or remove columns as appropriate. You're determining the scale to be used in the rankings. So we already have the scale here. So we have our weight. So criteria one has, is going to have the highest weight. Criteria two is going to have the, the second, three, two, and one. And so you can see how those are going to work. So when we look at our options, when we fill in our options, it's going to be based on the criteria. We're going to, we're going to score those options right based on those criteria and the way the weight works is when we go over here to our weighted score when we click on this tab right here you're going to see that i have put in a formula okay and so the way the formula works is it multiplies your your weighted criteria option against your weight so say i put a five here when i click on it it's going to score as a 25 because five times five, right? So the second criteria is not as high as a weight. So if I put a five here, so let's first, let's delete here. So if I put a five here, you can see it only goes to 20 because five times four. So it's not as high as importance. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to assign our options. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to, list these options. So the first option we're going to have is McDonald's manager. And so we're going to do an example for jobs, right? So we're going to look at different jobs that you could do as an example. So first one is going to be McDonald's manager. Next job that we're going to put in here is a doctor. Next job that we're going to put in is an NFL player. Next job that we're going to put here is an engineer. And the last one we're going to put in as a truck driver. So now we have our four options and now we're going to come up with the criteria so based on those jobs we're going to assign some criteria so the first criteria that we're going to put in is the job market because that is probably the most important one and so when you're doing your project or when you're doing a decision matrix you're going to be looking at criteria and you're going to rank those criteria as most important to least important based on the project based on the materials that are available based on uh, the customer requirements, right? Or your design specifications. So in this example, we're going to put job market as number one, because when you're choosing a job, that should probably be the, be the biggest determining factor. The second is going to be your enjoyment of that job. The third we're going to put is your talents or my talents, right? Because you can always improve your talents with practice. The next is going to be pay and the least important is going to be schooling. And the reason why I ranked schooling as the least important criteria is because that's an option that you can always improve upon, right? So you can go to school to be a McDonald's manager, right? You can get an MBA. You can go to school to become a doctor. It may take more time, money, and resources, but the options are there and you can do it. OK, so the so now that we have our criteria installed and we have our options, the next thing we're going to do is going to rank those. So it says right here, note it's best to hide the scores until all cells have been filled in order to not skew results. Right. And so what you can do is you can select onto this cell. You can right click with your mouse and hit hide row. So that way you don't see those scores. OK. And the other thing that you can do is you can right click here. And you can, let's see if we can hide column. There we go. Okay, so that way we don't see what, what it looks like at the end until we're ready to finally see what it looks like at the, at the end. So we're not, we're not skewing our results. So starting off with the McDonald's manager, we're going to look at the job market. So the job market for McDonald's manager is probably pretty high. And so we're going to rate this between a one and a five. So one being the least 
five being the most. So McDonald's manager, probably the most easily accessible job. So we're going to rate that as a five. We're going to go down this down, down the line. So McDonald's manager is a five doctor. Uh, so how accessible is it to become a doctor? I would probably say that's a three. NFL player. So NFL players are, are very rare, right? So it's like less than 1% of the population gets into the NFL. It's probably less than 0.001% of the population. So I'm going to rate that as that least likely. Engineer is pretty easy, right? Easier than a doctor. So I'll rate that as a four. And then for the truck driver, I'll rate that as a five, right? Because the job market is pretty high for truck drivers are always in demand. So the next thing we're going to look at is the criteria for enjoyment. So how much would you enjoy this or how much would your customer enjoy it if you're looking at a product? And so enjoyment for McDonald's manager, I would say for me personally, that would be a one. A doctor, I think that would be pretty interesting, right? So I'm going to rate that as a four. NFL player, I would say that's a five. That would be like a dream job, right? Engineer, I, I've done it before, so I'd say that's a four for me. And a truck driver, I'm going to rate that as probably a two because I'm not, uh, I'm not really into driving trucks, but it's going to be more enjoyable than a McDonald's manager. Okay, next is my talent. So what skills do I have that are, enable me to become a uh, each one of these types of jobs. So the McDonald's manager, I have all the necessary skills. A doctor, I'd have to go back to school and figure out, uh, go through medical school. Uh, NFL player, so I'd say that's a three as well. So I do have some skills in that area. So the engineer, I'm already certified. So I'd say that's a five for me. And then the truck driver, I'd still have to go to school and and but i do have abilities to drive so i'd say that's a three and so now we're going to go up to pay so let's look at this so the mcdonald's manager makes the least amount so that's a one that doctor is probably a four compared to somebody say an nfl player right that pay is the five engineer is a is probably a four and the last one is going to be that truck driver and they make pretty good money so i'm going to say they're a three make a lot more money than a McDonald's manager. And then that last criteria of schooling, right? So uh, how much school do you need? So I don't need any school. That's a five for me, right? The doctor, I would need to go back to school, right? So I'm going to put a three. The NFL player, I don't need any schooling for that one. Uh, let's make that a five, right? So I'm going to say the doctor actually is a one because I. Engineer, right? So I'm going to say that's a five. And then the truck driver is probably going to be a three, right? Because the reason why I ranked doctor for schooling as number one is because I would have to go to med school, right? And so now we fi filled it out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to unhide our options, right? And we're going to unhide our results. And so now as we scroll down, we're going to see where we rank. OK, so McDonald's manager came out as a 51. Doctor came out as a 49. Engineer came out as a 64. The NFL player came out as a 49 as well. And then finally, that truck driver came out as a 51. Right. And so now what we can do is we can select those. We can select those cells and we can highlight those cells with different colors, right? And so let's do this. Let's go here. Let's highlight those cells. Oh, let's go a little bit slower. All right. And so you can highlight them with different colors or you can go to, let's look for the right option here. It's a little bit different with Google Sheets than it would be with Excel. So we got to find what we're looking for. We're going to go to conditional conditional formatting and we're going to go to apply to range. We already have them selected and we're going to do a color scale. And so our minimum value we're going to have as that 49. We're going to do percentages actually. We're going to put that at 49.
I'm going to change that color to red. The middle value, we're going to do percentages as well. We're going to change that to 50. We're going to put that as yellow. And then our high value, we're going to go to percentages. We're going to change that to that 65 or 60. We'll do it to 64. And we're going to change that to green. Right. And now when we close this off and we start scrolling up, you can see that it highlights which values are your best choice, right? So our best option here for this particular example would be an, as an engineer into a job, right? And so if you scroll down, you can also see that I've also added some options for buying a new computer, upgrading existing a computer, right? And so this one, same options, same way that it's working, right? Except this one, I added some percentages on here and it, what, it was based on that 100% model, right? So number five is 33, 20, 27, seven, and 13. You can see it's out of order. So if we change this to a four, change this to a three, change this to a two, and change this to a one, it will automatically adjust those percentages and it equals that 100%. And the way that this one works is when you click on to that, that, that last cell, it also has that formula so it's taking that C18, which is your percentage, multiplied times your criteria. So it's not multiplying times the weight, it's multiplying times the percentage, and then it's adding, right? And so that's a different way, a different example, but it also is included for you to look at, okay? And you can see with this one, we put criteria as cost, learning curve, possibility of failure, coolness, and effort. So this is, this is an example that you have available to you if you're using this, this example spreadsheet. And this one right here will just come as option one, option two, option three, option four through five, and this will be blank. You'll have to fill this in, okay? Now there is a directions right here, so make sure you read through your instructions. You can, you can hide as you are going through, so that way you don't skew your data, but this should be able to help you make some weighted decisions. If you have questions, let me know. I hope this helped you out on how to use a weighted decision matrix and have a great day.